All right, so the validation you have seen so far happens on the server. While server-side validation is absolutely crucial for building secure applications, it's nice to do validation on the client as well. This has two benefits. First of all, the user gets immediate feedback because they don't have to wait for a round trip to the server. Secondly, we won't waste our server resources every time the user makes a mistake filling out a form. It's better to do some basic validation on the client to make sure the data is properly formatted so when we run the server-side validation, the data is most likely in the right format. And we do that extra server-side validation mostly for security to prevent a malicious user from bypassing client-side validation. Now, by default, client-side validation is not enabled in your ASP.NET MVC applications. Now, let me explain why. In Solution Explorer, open up app underline start, bundle config. So earlier, we looked at these bundles. We can see here we have a bundle called jQuery val. This bundle is not referenced anywhere. So if you go to Solution Explorer, Views, Shared, Layout, and scroll down to the bottom of the file, you see here we are rendering two bundles. One is jQuery, the other is Bootstrap. But we don't have jQuery val. Now look at this line. This render section statement allows us to add a script section in our views. And what we put there will be rendered here in the page. So on pages where we need jQuery validation, like the pages where we have a form, we can reference our jQuery validation bundle to enable client-side validation. Now back in our customer form, at the bottom of the file, I'm gonna add the script section. So add sign, section, all lowercase. You can see IntelliSense has picked up the sections defined in our layout file. Now in this block, I'm gonna render our jQuery validation bundle. So add sign, scripts, dot, render. And here we need to pass the address of our bundle. So in bundle config, here's the address of our bundle. So all files that match this pattern will be combined and compressed and they will be available for download at this address. So we copy this and paste it here. Save, back to the browser, go to customers slash new, and then press Control F5 to make sure you get a fresh copy of this page. All right, now right click on an empty area, go to inspect, network tab. So I'm gonna click the save button and you will see there will be no network activity here. And that's because we have enabled client-side validation. So to make sure that your client-side validation is working, you can come back here and see if clicking the save button causes a round trip to the server. So, save. Look, we got the validation errors, but there's nothing here in the network tab. So all this is happening on the client and it's faster. Now, let me give you a bit more insight about how this actually happens. So earlier, we used these data annotations to implement validation. The good thing about data annotations is that ASP.NET uses them both for server-side and client-side validation. So on the server-side, I told you that when we get a parameter in an action, MVC framework validates that object using data annotations applied on its properties. Also, in Razor views, when we render input fields using HTML helper methods, Razor view engine looks at the data annotations applied on the reference properties and adds additional attributes to the HTML markup. Let me show you. So back in the browser, inspect this text box. Look at this markup. We have a bunch of attributes prefixed with data-val. jQuery validation plugin understands these attributes. So when you click the save button, jQuery validation kicks in, it inspects each field, its value, and the data attributes applied to it. If the field is not valid, it will render the validation message next to it. Now, one thing you need to know about client-side validation is that it only works with standard data annotations in .NET. 
So the custom validation attribute that we created does not have client-side support. And if you want to add that, you need to write some jQuery code. Now, honestly, I've never done this for my custom attributes. Why? Because if our validation rules change, we need to update them both on the server and on the client. So I prefer to use client-side validation for standard .NET data annotations and validate my custom business rules purely on the server. In the next lecture, we're going to look at a very important security topic called anti-forgery tokens.